you know, if nobody's going to make a new front mission, I guess we got to do it ourselves. And tonight, we're going to talk about how ToJ Productions is doing just that. My name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and welcome back to the channel. Hello everyone, if you enjoy what I do, including coverage of indie turn-based strategy RPGs like Krieg's Front Tactics, then a like on this video, a subscription to the channel, and maybe a consideration of checking out my Patreon would be very much appreciated. As a small YouTuber, I need all the help that I can get from folks like you to keep this whole channel running, so if you could consider looking at those things, that'd be great. Thank you so much. So, Krieg's Front Tactics. If the thought of Indie Tactics Front Mission is of interest to you, it should be. We checked out Krieg's Front Tactics here on the channel a little while back, and I've been following the production on Twitter for many a year now. This one is going to be an absolute banger, and you can check it out for yourself today, right now, as they've just put up a demo titled Krieg's Front Tactics Prologue, which I had the privilege of playing a couple weeks ago early so I could start working on this video. Thank you to ToJ Productions for giving me early access to what has been an absolutely stellar experience. I highly recommend that you go check it out right now. It's on Steam. I will have a link to it in the description. So with that said, what is Krieg's Front Tactics? Think of a mix of Front Mission meets XCOM meets Phoenix Point. There's a little bit in there. We'll talk about how that works from a gameplay and mechanic standpoint. But if you're familiar with Front Mission, then you'll have a pretty good idea of what you're getting yourselves into here. This is Front Mission in an alternate world where the mid-60s, 70s, 80s wars that happened in the Southeast Asia region of real Earth have a similar type of conflict going on in this alternate Earth, but with the inclusion of Kriegers, the mechs for this particular setting. The game has a really down-to-earth, gritty, violent, real military vibe. Think things like Full Metal Jacket or Apocalypse Now, in terms of how characters interact with each other, how combat goes down, all that type of stuff. But then with really nasty, grungy, dirty mechs as the main vehicle of war in this ongoing jungle conflict. This is drawn directly from the inspiration and history of the production team, so there's definitely a lot of that real-world influence injected into it. Think of things like the real-world events that influenced Tactics Ogre and things like that, and you'll have an idea of where we're going with this. As far as the gameplay is concerned, there's a lot to talk about. When you get into combat, you'll have a squad of mechs, anywhere from like three to six I've seen thus far, and you'll have to progress across a fog of war map to slowly reveal where enemies are at. This is where you're going to see a lot of your XCOM come into play as you actually activate pods of enemies similar to XCOM. It's not like every enemy on the map is visible right at the start, nor active right at the start, as you might expect from something like Front Mission. You have to be tactical, you have to be smart about how you move up, use cover that's going to make you invisible to the enemy until you're ready to open up or just charge blindly in and you know hope that whatever it is that comes charging back at you isn't going to cause too much of a problem. Once you get into combat, you'll see a little bit more of a mix of Front Mission and XCOM going on. You'll have AP, like you would expect from something like your XCOMs, where you can use multiple attacks if you stay still, you can move and attack, different things like that with melee options, ranged options, skills that you might need to have even more AP to be able to utilize, but that will focus your shots, let you deal more damage, maybe being able to use a big sniper rifle if you don't move or only move one square, things like that. You're going to want to make sure that you're flanking enemies, that you're using cover, and being very smart about where you're moving. And the enemy will do the same to you, which is pretty awesome. This is especially important if you're dealing with certain types of enemies that have shields. You're going to want to flank them, hit them from the side, where they aren't going to have cover from the shield, and also attacking from the side and the back, like in a lot of tactics games, is going to give you a much greater chance to hit and potentially allow you to deal extra critical damage as well. There's a number of different types of weapons in the game thus far, as you would probably expect. Again, melee weapons with punching, giant hammers, bats, things like that, sniper rifles, machine guns, assault rifles, SMGs, all sorts of mortars and grenade launchers, which are insanely powerful. I love being able to say, well, there's a couple of enemies over in these trees here. Let's make the trees go away and the enemy as well and just unleash a ridiculous volley of ranged mortar fire that does a ton of damage. If you're familiar with Front Mission, you are going to be looking to disable certain body parts, arms, torso, legs, etc. If you destroy the torso, you destroy the mech, and if you destroy like an arm, it can't use the weapon in that arm. If you destroy the legs, it can't move. There's a lot of play here. 
Now, what I like about Krieg's front tactics, though, that was a little bit frustrating about front mission until you were able to unlock an ability that allowed you to target specific body parts, is the fact that you can actually free target every ranged gun attack in the game. If you've played Phoenix Point, you know exactly what I'm talking about here, and you're seeing it on screen right now. You actually get a targeting reticle, and it will show you exactly where your shots will land within the green circle and where they're potentially going to land within the yellow circle. So you can get a perfect idea of how you can weave a shot between enemies through cover to try and hit an enemy that you really need to be able to drop. This is my number one favorite thing about Krieg's Front Tactics. The just capability to say, I'm going to toss RNG out the window for the most part and get an exact idea of what my targeting looks like here and try to hit the part of this mech or the mech out of this group that I desperately need to deal with. It is just so satisfying and it makes high accuracy weapons like, say, a sniper rifle all the more fun to use when you can hit them from all the way downtown and perfectly land a shot on an arm that has a big scary weapon that you don't want to get hit by on the following enemy turn. This is an absolutely awesome include and I think it's going to be a ton of fun for anyone who decides to pick up and try out Krieg's Front Tactics. As far as missions are concerned, from what we've seen thus far, they are pretty lengthy. I imagine they will get even lengthier as time goes on. And they have a variety of different map types and objectives. There's been a few maps that have been fairly long and linear with a lot of cover that you're trying to move up through carefully so as to not activate too many enemy pods at once. And then more open, sprawling urban battles where you kind of have less cover and need to just blitz the enemy as fast as possible to try and drop them before they can drop you. That's made all the more intense by the fact that you can actually take the opportunity to shoot back if enemies shoot at you and you had the AP left over from the previous turn, which means there's a lot of give and take, push and pull between phases, where if you're not someone who maybe likes the set player phase, enemy phase, there's gonna be a little bit more interplay between those phases. That should be very engaging for you and that you definitely need to keep in mind as you're pushing through these missions. As far as the game's challenge is concerned, even in the prologue, it's definitely gotten fairly challenging. And we do have permadeath, at least in the prologue. So by the time I got to the final mission, I had actually lost two of my characters and just had no one to fill those slots. It was pretty nasty. I was very surprised. But that's war, baby. If your Krieger gets blown up on the battlefield and your buddies aren't able to save you, that's it, man. Soldiers die. I love that this is a thing. Some of you are probably going to want to hope that there's going to be a no permadeath mode or something like that. But for me, who loves actually having to consider potential soldier deaths in game like this, this is huge. And I love that dose of realism that it drops in here, even though we're, you know, flying around in giant gasoline fueled humanoid death machines. My second favorite thing about this game is the fact that you actually traverse the world map in semi real time and actually have to navigate around enemy squads and pay attention to what's going on where as you make your way towards your objectives. It really makes it feel like you're actually in this kind of jungle warfare setting where you have somewhere you need to be and there's going to be locals who or other enemy military types that are patrolling around the area that you might not want to have to engage with because damage is persistent. Ammo is persistent. As you move from mission to mission, unless you're able to find repair points or like resource cash drops to refuel and rearm and repair, you're going to be going in at the same level of damage as you ended the previous fight on, which is intense. It's really, really interesting. So having to pay attention to where these enemies are, what their patrol paths are, and staying out of their way if you're not ready to deal with them, super cool. I can't wait to see what other maps and what the overall world map looks like and how this is going to be something that you're going to have to play with. As you progress, you will find different events like a crashed plane that you maybe got a hint about in the previous village where you're able to find some new guns or maybe some new arms and armor that you're able to equip. Or maybe you'll find an old abandoned base that someone was in a rush to evacuate from and left a bunch of gear behind in and a functioning garage so you can modify your Kriegers. There's a lot going on on the world map and it encourages you to explore instead of just running from point A to point B to point C, mission, 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 linear style. It's really, really nice. It's a cool little addition. Speaking of garages and the fact that there is persistent damage, this is something that I love as well because it means that you're actually going to have to pay attention to what parts you have available. 
Like, you can destroy enemy Kriegers and get their parts, and at least early on in the prologue, they're generally going to be weaker than what you're using because you're coming in with a fully kitted out quasi-American Krieger squad with fairly solid gear, whereas you're fighting a bunch of rebels and freedom fighters who are using what other scrapped together parts they can, so what you get from them is generally not going to be very great. However, having an extra pair of arms lying around if your fancy dancy stuff gets blown off is still going to be pretty nice, even if it's a lower HP, armor value, load weight, whatever, because at least it's functional. So actually collecting different parts and keeping them on you to swap out and have better HP values is going to be huge, especially if you're talking about your core part, because like, listen, you don't want to be going into battle with only 5 HP and some armor left on your core when that core getting destroyed means you're losing that pilot. Better to swap to something that is overall inferior, but is more repaired just so you can keep the mission rolling forward. It's a really cool system. I can't wait to see how often you're able to find or buy different parts and how often you're going to be able to repair those parts to kind of see how valuable it's going to be to hold on to some old gear rather than just selling it all all the time and upgrading to the fanciest new stuff like you tend to do in at least Front Mission 1, which I have the most experience with. As far as the story, music, sound effects, graphics, everything are concerned, this game is awesome. It's kind of leaning into that PS1 style aesthetic that a lot of Indian horror games have been going for recently, but that really lends to that grungy, grimy, wartime feel that you would like to see from a real robot style game like this. And it lends itself well too to that old style 90s war movie vibe. The characters are brutal, man. They are rude to each other. They use some nasty language that you may not be too happy to hear, but that makes sense for soldiers in the setting. And again, it lends to that realism that I love to see. Add on to that how loud and impactful different bullets, calibers of rifle, missiles, mortars, grenades, all that are, as well as the mech noises as you're blasting through the undergrowth, knocking over trees, running into an enemy with a big punch before unloading a shotgun into their core. It's loud and powerful and it sounds exactly like I would expect it to if we actually had managed to cobble together functional wartime mecha, especially in a sort of 70s to 80s, 90s era of real history. It sounds and looks so, so good. There's a ton of detail as well in actual mech movement, like one of your allies jumping out of the way if you're blasting forward at full speed to move up to a different position. And even just the fact that if you're moving very far, you'll go into sort of glider mode as you'll see in a lot of real robot type stuff or armored core where you activate your boosters and you just pulse forward across the battlefield rather than walking with your legs. Whereas if you're only moving a few spaces, yeah, you'll just trundle over with those big, heavy, thudding stomps that you love to see from slow plodding real robots like the Kriegers in Krieg's Front Tactics. As far as the story is concerned, I'm extremely excited to see where it goes. There's definitely a lot of nationalistic pride, freedom fighters being whipped up by radicals and politicians on the other more militarized, quote unquote, civilized side who are pushing forward in this relatively innocent country for resources and things like that or territory. If you're familiar at all with real world history, especially, you know, like America and the way it's handled a lot of things. It should be a familiar tale for sure. And I'm hoping that we get some of that tactics ogre level, really grimy, nasty, interconnected politics and ethnic troubles and the things that really make a tasty dramatic story. I'm really hoping that we see some of that here in Krieg's Front Tactics, because it's not the type of thing that you often get in mecha series in a tactics sense. You'll see it in things like Gundam and everything, of course, but in actual games for mech combat, not as often. So it would be really nice to see this here. All in all, I'm extremely hyped for Krieg's Front Tactics. I'm so glad that I got the opportunity to play the prologue early again. Thank you to Toge Productions, or Toge Productions, apologies if I'm mispronouncing that, for allowing me to have early access to this. I cannot wait for the full release. I'm absolutely gonna be covering it on the channel. And again, if you have Steam, and you are at all interested in mechs, in tactics combat, Front Mission, XCOM, again, Phoenix Point, absolutely go check this out. The demo is completely free. It's very meaty. Like there's a good amount of content here, at least an hour and a half, two hours more. If you decide that you want to tinker around with different builds and different weapon loadouts, there's just a ton to do. I cannot recommend this highly enough. Again, link to the steam store is in the description. With that said, I am going to wrap this one up here though. My name has been Tom, otherwise known as titanium leg man. Go check out Krieg's front tactics, wishlist it, all that good stuff. And until the next video, I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there, and remember, be good to each other. Bye now.